is the Emergency Medical Minute. So I had an interesting patient today with uh, periodic hypokalemic uh, paralysis, which I thought's kind of worth uh, discussing every now and then. It's a rare uh, but uh, important uh, disease, and we see maybe one or two cases you know, every year or so. Uh, this is the second one I've seen in the last couple of years. Uh, and, and these patients have what is a rare autosomal dominant uh, condition. Uh, it often goes misdiagnosed uh, as, as um, patients with psychiatric disorders. The usual history is somebody will describe these episodes of profound muscle weakness, even sometimes progressing to the point of true frank paralysis where they're unable to walk or stand and get hospitalized. Um, it is um, very interesting in that it is often precipitated by vigorous exercise, but doesn't usually occur during the exercise. It's usually immediately following the rest after vigorous exercise. It often will be triggered by a high carbohydrate diet, believe it or not. So if people can have like a lot of sweets and provoke an attack, or they can have a very high sodium load that also seems to be able to provoke an attack. Um, and then some patients get triggered by uh, uh, high temperature changes and things like that. There's even uh, reports of people having true attacks based on fear or bright lights or, or very loud noises, uh, believe it or not, which is almost unbelievable. I saw a case once in a patient uh, who was uh, participating in the uh, Leadville 100 run who became completely paralyzed and was unable to walk and had a potassium of 1.9. Uh, the interesting thing about these folks is usually just supplemental potassium rapidly reverses their symptoms. And many patients, when they have mild attacks, will actually reverse themselves. They can develop some rhabdomyolysis with it, some muscle swelling and release of CPK. And the thought is what happens is when the muscles swell, there's some CPK release that they actually release some potassium, which drives their potassium serum up a little bit and their weakness resolves. Um, one of the big rule outs is you can get a very similar clinical syndrome in patients with thyroid disease, specifically thyrotoxicosis. So when you see a patient with this, you have to check their thyroid. Um, other than that, treatment is sort of interesting. It's actually mostly based on prevention, and many patients don't get attacks if they follow a low carb diet and a low sodium diet. Many patients get, uh, get uh, good prevention from taking Diamox, which is acetazolamide, a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, which has effects on potassium excretion. That's thought to be its mechanism of action. Um, and then oral supplemental potassium is usually very effective. So patients can often supplement at home, but often have very high uh, potassium requirements, like 100 to 150 milliequivalents a day of supplemental potassium in some cases. So interesting condition, we don't see it very often, occasionally we do, it's worth here knowing what it is. If somebody says to you, oh yeah, sometimes they get paralyzed and it's because of low potassium, that is a thing, they're not necessarily uh, crazy. So let's have a good shift and uh, thanks for your interest. Emergency Medical Minute is, and always will be, about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.